Hello, hello. Hi, folks. How's it going? Um, my name is Mike. Uh, how's everybody doing today? Good. Uh, let's go one. Just type one in chat if you uh, if you just heard me. I want to see the delay on on chat. As far as that's pretty fast. That's pretty good. Uh, I'm good. Yeah. Um, so yeah. My name is Mike. Um, nice to meet y'all. Thanks for coming to the stream today. Um, I am a lead instructor at App Academy. Uh, I, uh, I teach at the Campus Hybrid Program in San Francisco. And uh, I've been teaching here for about four years, four and a half years. I've been doing it for a while. And uh, yeah, I kind of basically as lead instructor, I kind of like run a cohort. Um, I have a team of instructors that work with me uh, and we, you know, give lectures um, and uh, kind of just control the whole experience from day one of an App Academy cohort to uh, uh, week, week 16, day five, when we give them off to the job search coaches. Um, but yeah, I'm uh, pretty excited to be here. App Academy, to those who don't know, I just give a quick, uh, you know, uh, description of what App Academy does. Uh, we're a software engineering bootcamp. Uh, we teach skills to become uh, full stack web developers. Uh, that's a person who creates web pages on the internet and uh, creates systems to process data and gets that gets displayed on web pages. So it's it's a pretty all encompassing job position, uh, and it's it's a desirable job position as people might know. Um, uh, known for being, uh, you know, companies treating their employees well and and uh, and being a job where you can use your brain, you know, to kind of, uh, you know, get interesting work done and work, you, can work, you can work for interesting companies. Um, but yeah, so uh, we we believe at App Academy that uh, coding should be accessible to as many people as possible. And so that's part of the motivation of the stream today. We're kind of branching out and, and trying to do some more stuff. Uh, and, uh, you know, we want to create some more online kind of free content um, so that more people can get involved in, in, in coding. Um, everyone who works at App Academy is really passionate about, you know, making coding more accessible. Uh, and so this is just going to go towards that. I personally, why am I streaming today? I, um, I think it's just an interesting idea. You know, I like the idea of App Academy branching in, in this direction. Um, I kind of want to gauge y'all and see, you know, what's interesting to you as far as like beginner topics versus maybe some people who might be interested in a stream like this, uh, with it being about chat GPT topics that are interesting for a job search. It might help you in a job search. So I want to gauge people's interest and see what people like. Uh, I think this is a good topic that kind of covers a lot of that. Uh, it's a very big topic. Um, and so, yeah, I'm excited for today's experience. Let me go ahead and share. I'm going to do like a little presentation for y'all. Don't mind my background. It's just, this is just, you know, my room. I don't have a cool streamer background. Um, let me share my screen. Okay. So welcome everyone. Happy that you're here. Uh, yeah. So one thing to just show you, um, you know, if you like this stream, uh, definitely go to appacademy.io uh, to view all programs. Uh, you know, if you have any questions about this kind of stuff, you can ask in the chat. Okay. Uh, Matt showed in the chat there, you can use exclamation point discord to, uh, to, to get that link. If you want to join the discord, please join the discord if you are, if you are interested. Um, but yeah. Um, one thing to know about App Academy is we have 
uh, three main programs, okay? Um, as far as like the paid programs go. So one is in person, which is what I teach. Um, we In San Francisco, we are switching to uh, our program going online. Um, so it'll be, I think, still a separate program than the other online, but anyways. This is kind of the in-person that I teach. There is still in New York City, a in-person program. Um, that is a 16 week program. It teaches Ruby and JavaScript, as well as some other languages like SQL and uh, the Rails framework, as well as React. Um, there is the online full-time program. That is a 24 week program uh, that is fully online. And they teach uh, uh, JavaScript and some Python. Uh, as well as, you know, again, the other parts of uh, many other parts of the full stack development pipeline. Um, and then there's the online part time program, which is based around the online full time. It's just spread out over a longer period of time. It's a more flexible schedule for people who, I guess, can't commit themselves 24 seven to, to something like this. Um, so, yeah. Um, but yeah, as many of you know, the online curriculum is Avail available for free at App Academy Open, uh, and then Matt will provide links if you need them. So, all right. So let's talk about what today. What I'm going to talk about today. Um, this is the agenda. Okay. Some stuff that's on the docket is uh, I'm going to talk about some Chat GPT basics. Okay. So we'll start off with just uh, like what is Chat GPT and talk about it. Um, I'm going to talk about how to write good prompts for ChatGPT, okay? Because uh, believe it or not, I believe that there are good prompts and bad prompts depending on uh, what you want. And you might not even know it, right? Uh, I can show how we can use uh, ChatGPT to improve the efficiency of some of our you know, code, um, which I think is a useful thing to know. Uh, I can show a quick overview of how to use it for a job search help. Uh, and then lastly, we can make a chat bot, which I think is gonna be fun. Okay. So to get started, um, the stream today is about ChatGPT. Uh, and we wanna learn specifically how to use this for help with coding because it, it's helpful for a lot of different things. Uh, it's, it's very versatile, uh, it knows a lot of stuff. Um, but first, let me ask you all, like, what do you know about ChatGPT? What are some things that all of y'all have heard about it? Um, you know, good, good or bad, right? This stream is expected to be an hour long. But if we go late, maybe we'll go late. I don't know. Anyone, anyone have any, uh, you know, anyone heard about ChatGPT before? What have you, you know, used it for anything interesting or? Um, the hard part, let me see, I'll show this. The hard part of ChatGPT is asking it the right questions. Yeah, I, I think that's true. Um, yeah, it, I mean, that's what we're gonna talk about today. Rose says, ChatGPT is a large language model that can answer questions you pose it. That is true, yeah. Cool, well, we're gonna learn some stuff. I'm gonna show some some stuff. Okay, so here's a, some of you might've seen some weird things about ChatGPT, right? Um, and uh, here's an example of, of something, uh, a weird response you can get from ChatGPT, okay? So you ask it, uh, can you draw me a flower? It says, certainly, here's a simple flower that I drew for you. And it's some kind of a triangle uh, with a stem. I mean, maybe that could be a flower. Um, it's at least nice when it says, you know, I hope you like it. Is there anything else I can help with? Um, okay, what about this? What is one plus one? Not too hard of a question. One plus one equals two. Um, are you sure? Isn't it three? It says, I apologize. My previous response was incorrect. One plus one is indeed three. Uh, and so I guess ChatGPT was not 
super sure of itself and was willing to defer to the user here uh, as far as what the answer to one plus one is. Um, now, you know, these can be contextual, right? I do know that, that I think ChatGPT is still bad at, at drawing things. Um, but as far as math, I think it might have gotten a bit better since some of these examples came out. Um, but also, uh, it could depend on the context of a, of a conversation with, with, with the bot, right? So another example here is uh, the user just typed in E. <laughs> they typed E, and then they got this whole long response back. Um, you know, reading the response, we might be able to see that, like, it says, as you move east, right? So maybe E represents east. This is clearly, I would say, part of some bigger game that maybe the user is playing with ChatGPT, uh, some kind of, like, adventure game that they've they've agreed upon. Um, but yeah, taken out of context, something like this looks pretty strange, right? Uh, why would E uh, be uh, <laughs> a prompt a response like that, right? Um, and so one thing that we're going to talk about today is how uh, we can really have good control over how to use ChatGPT and, and understand how to, how to use it uh, correctly. OK, so ChatGPT. Uh, as someone mentioned in, in, in chat, uh, I believe it was Rose Return, said that this is a large language model-based chatbot. Okay. Um, okay. So what does that mean? I mean, it's a large model-based chatbot. It just means that, like, sorry, large language model-based chatbot just means that, uh, you know, it's it's large. It, it's, it's used a lot of different, uh, has a huge database of information it has access to, um, but uh, and it's, it uses a model. Uh, one thing about ChatGPT is that uh, it is, you know, very much like the what we see, very much um, uh, molded or trained uh, by like a whole bunch of people uh, to improve its performance. Okay, and so. Um, it has access to a lot of data, but this actually has to be kind of like trained by humans so that uh, it gives you correct responses rather than, I guess, you know, incorrect responses, right? Um, so ChatGPT uh, came out November 30th, 2022. Um, here are some features. It can remember prompts within a conversation, okay? so. ChatGPT does not just respond to individual me me uh, messages, and then you know the next message uh, is like a whole new response. Um, within a conversation, okay, that you have with ChatGPT, it can remember previous prompts you've asked it and previous things that you've told it, and it can build its responses based upon its previous responses, which is really really useful, um, especially when you're trying to ask it something complex, right? Because there could be multiple parts to that thing that you want to, you know, get help on. Um, it has massive technical knowledge. Okay, so it has access to a really wide array of information. Um, you know, today is going to be about code, um, but it, it can do a lot of things other than just coding, right? Um, people have asked it to write stories, to write essays for them in in high school or something. Uh, 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 presentations, you know, uh, did I write th my presentation today based off of uh, ChatGPT? No, I didn't. Um, I asked it for help, and I kind of looked at it, and it was like, you know, that's interesting. I was like, okay, it's cool, but I'm not going to really use that. I, I, I still developed my own presentation for this, I promise. Um, yeah, I can write poetry and song lyrics. Maybe not good ones, but it can do it. Um, it can write recipes. Okay, you can ask it for like, uh, how do I make a chicken pot pie? And it'll do its best to uh, to do that. Um, yeah, let me uh, answer this question in chat because this is going to come up next. As someone or people learning to be a full stack dev, relying on chat GPT, uh, will it hinder that person's ability to think and gain problem solving skills? And I am going to say potentially Yes, if used incorrectly, because ChatGPT is so powerful, 
we need to be careful about how we use it, right? Um, the analogy that I would give is um, similar to uh, a calculator in grade school in your math class, right? When you're learning the basics of addition and you know you want to learn how to do long division or something like that, or you're doing subtraction, you got to learn how to carry the one. Every all these things that you kind of need to practice in order to get like be faster at you know at your math. Um, you know you you know the, the teacher is going to say you can't use a calculator in your test for that, right? Um, later on, right? Once you're in high school, you know they're like, you need a hundred dollar calculator if you want to be in this class. It's okay. At, at some point, you know, they do want you to learn how to use the tools, but at the beginning when you're learning, it is actually very important that, uh, you don't rely on it too heavily. Um, another reason that you don't want to rely on it is, um, there are some limitations of chat GPT. So chat GPT uses a reward model, um, that humans monitor. Okay. And so it kind of has a, this reward model that says like, it's rewarded if it gives you an answer that a human likes, and it's not rewarded if it, if the human that it's interacting with doesn't like its answer. And so one thing that happens with ChatGPT as people use it is that it's kind of learned never to say that it doesn't know the answer to a question. Okay. And so, you know, sometimes ChatGPT can say, I won't answer that question if it's against the guidelines that it has about, you know, uh, certain things that it won't talk about. But um, as far as technical stuff goes, if it's not outside of like the rules of ChatGPT, um, it will pretend to know the answer to certain things rather than say, I don't know. Okay. Because it knows if it says that it doesn't know, then it's not going to get rewarded for sure. Whereas it, if it tricks you into, into, into you believing it, then it still at least has a chance of, of its reward. Right. Um, so that's a drawback of ChatGPT is its responses can be convincing yet incorrect. Right. Um, another limitation is it has limited knowledge of events uh, after 2021. That's just based off of the you know set of data that it has access to. Um, and so, you know, any, anything that's happened since then, it's not going to be um, up to date on. Right. And so for a lot of things, that's fine. Right. But for others, it's not. So if we, you know, there are examples in programming, right. And that's what we care about here is <clears throat> if it, uh, if there's been some updates, right. To some coding language or, you know, uh, uh, yeah, if there's been some updates and then, you know, maybe there's an environment set up that's, that's different or some different methods you have access to or a new framework, then it is not going to know how to do those things. And it could give you outdated information on how to do it, right? Um, I personally have run into examples where ChatGPT tells me something and it's outdated. It doesn't work. And, uh, you know, it just didn't know just didn't know that, didn't have access to that information, right? Um, and so that does have issues with programming. And the, again, the other problem is it will still tell you that answer as if it's correct, right? Okie dokie. So how can we use this for coding? Okay. Um, well, there's a couple ways we can use it. Um, a big one is conceptual help. Okay. Um, I think that that is a like very underrated part of, of this is that, you know, you can ask ChatGPT, you know, a conceptual question. How does this work? Right. Like, like, especially in coding where it's like you have maybe a hole in your knowledge about something, you know, you can ask, how does this work? Not, a, not what is the answer? to this, what's the solution to this coding problem, right? It's, you know, can you explain to me in these terms, right? What's going on here, right? And ChatGPT is useful for that, okay? It, it can be very good and it can help, it can explain things in many different ways, which is also very cool. 
Um, you can use ChatGPT for help solving bugs, right? You can give it your code, ask what you know, how what's wrong with with, with the code. It'll find the bug. Um, I do think that it's you know there's some onus on the user, like on you, to say, you know, don't tell me, <laughs> just give me a hint or something, or or uh, lead me in the direction that that kind of thing, um, so that it's not just doing everything for you. But it can solve bugs if you. You never want to be coding and stuck on a bug for like a whole day or something or five hours, whatever, you know, something that just halts your progress and you can't go any further. You know, eventually you do want to get past it. And I've talked, you know, we're going to get into this other stuff. Improving efficiency of your algorithms and making chat box is another way that we can use ChatGPT for coding. Okay, so let's, let's see. Um, how do I make a good prompt in ChatGPT? So one thing uh, I'm going to do here is let's see. Okay, here's an example. Okay, this is what I want to show. Yeah, it is. Um, those of you who are on open, right? Um, Y'all are on open. Uh, maybe you've seen this problem. Okay, it's actually one of the ones that's kind of far down in uh, web development fundamentals, JavaScript fundamentals, control flow arrays. I'm down on the vowel counter problem. Okay. Um, okay. So let's say we hit this problem, and um, you know, we've come up with a solution that we feel confident in. And then we click run and, you know, we don't get the answer we're looking for, okay? We get 222, two, two. Uh, we're looking for 322 two here, okay? So what might be the best way that we can use, you know, ChatGPT to help us here? Um, anyone, anyone in, in chat want to uh, tell me what's the best way. Wrong answers are, are, are okay. Don't worry about. Matt says dump the code in and ask it to help. That's an interesting idea. <laughs> Any other ideas? <laughs> Copy paste the code, okay. You know what? Let's try it. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to go to ChatGPT. Okay. And let's just try dumping it in. Okay. Press Shift Enter so I don't enter too soon. And I'm going to say Help. <laughs> let's see what happens. So it says, okay, it's coming up with a whole response for us. Okay. Okay. It says, of course, you know, I see that you have a function named count vowels that is intended to count the number of vowels in a given word. Um, there are a couple issues with the implementation that need to be fixed. It says, uh, there's an issue with the loop condition. In the for loop, you set the loop condition as I less than or equal to word dot length which is incorrect, okay? Arrays in JavaScript are zero indexed. And so uh, you should be going from zero to n minus one, right? So it should be i less than word dot length. Okay, that's great. Thanks, ChatGPT. Um, next is checking vowel inclusion. I'm doing word dot includes vowels i. Um, to check this, um, and it's not, that's not good. Okay, so however, the includes method checks the entire array um, vowels uh, if it includes the character, not if the character is a vowel. <clears throat> okay, and so the issue here is, right, vowels is this array. And so every time I'm checking, <clears throat> uh, uh, well, this is actually the corrected version, right? So now it's checking if vowels includes the word at this index, right? That's the point of doing the for loop. 
uh, and then it counts based off of that. Okay, so there you go. ChatGPT to the rescue, good to go. Does anyone see an issue with what we did here? Or is this perfect? Is this exactly what we wanted? You know, I don't know. You tell me. It gave you. It gave me the answer. Is that bad? <laughs> but part of me wanted the answer. You know. <clears throat> Matt votes not bad. You didn't have to think. That's that's where I'm going, okay? That's exactly where I'm going with this, okay? We actually didn't have to do any of the problem solving ourselves, right? We don't, We do, part of us wants the answer, okay? And this might be the problem with AI in general, right? And in and, and technology in general, right? We want these things and technology can give it to us. But in that process, we have lost our own ability to do that ourselves in, in a way, okay? Now, I'm not saying we need to go back and everyone needs to learn how to, you know, chop wood and, and, and hunt and everything. But um, in the context of coding, I do think it's still very valuable to learn how to solve these bugs on your own, okay? And so before you resort to doing a question like this in ChatGPT, um, there are some other things that you want to do first, right? If you're stuck, <laughs> uh, I like that. Yeah, Matt is like, who cares? Uh, if you're stuck, you know, you should develop ways to figure this, this out on your own. Okay. So one thing that I want to show, I'm going to share the S code. see my VS code. Um, you know, one tool that you have available to you in VS code is the debugger. Okay, this doesn't have to be a debugger lesson, but um, you, know, you can click anywhere inside to make a breakpoint. You can click on run and debug on the left side here. And then you can click run and debug. Okay. And from here, okay, we have access to a handy debugging console where we can type and see, you know, what is vowels, right? Um, what is word, okay? And then if we say word dot includes, we can try this line out. Well, obviously we get true because we're in here, but vowels I is A, okay? Now, maybe from doing this, we start to see, hey, maybe this isn't really exactly what I wanted to do here, you know? Um, you know, by figuring out the debugging process on our own, uh, that then this is more usable in like kind of any context, I guess. Like, you know, uh, maybe you don't have access to chat GPT. Maybe you're coding on a train. You don't have internet access, right? Um, and so, um, we should know how to do these tools, right? We should see how to interact with our code and, and find out what's wrong with it, okay? What's the difference between ChatGPT? Here, I'll post this. What's the difference between ChatGPT and, let's say, VS Code Copilot? Um, well, I would say they, I think they work on different models, but at the end of the day, they are very similar. And in, in the same way, I would recommend as a beginner, that uh, you don't use Copilot either. Okay, uh, that Copilot I think is something that's good uh, to use. Maybe once you get further along in your in your coding career, where you're confident in your coding and you feel like you don't need to, you know, or at least you can you can look at what Copilot gives you, and then you know enough to understand whether or not it's right or wrong, right? Because Copilot has the same issues of it can potentially give you wrong answers and whatnot. Okay, let's go back to the ChatGPT. So let's see, how can we ask ChatGPT this question in a different way? Okay. 
Um, I'm going to start a new conversation. Okay. So I'm going to say, just to show, right, what is a method I can use to find, I don't know, what am I trying to do here? Um, what is a JavaScript method I can use to find, uh, you know, a vowel, find, okay. <laughs> Uh, to check if a letter is a vowel or not. There we go. Please, and then you can also specify, right? Please explain in terms that a beginner to coding would understand. Thank you. Always nice to be polite to chat GPT. Okay, so this is not using the includes method, but it does like break down the problem into um, some basic steps. Um, it also does something interesting here where it does this two lowercase thing, right? That's something that we didn't have in our solution either. And it was checking to see, like, sometimes it's capital or lowercase. This just makes sure that um, whatever we're checking um, uh, can handle that uppercase or lowercase. Um, we can see that rather than includes, it's doing a long uh, series of ors, which is not incorrect, right? Possible. Um, another thing you can do here, right, is... Right, explain, it explains each, each part, which is very useful. Another thing you can do is ask, if you can say thank you, are there any uh, ways to do this with less code? Right. And so you can ask follow up questions to ChatGPT. And then this is where we get like our, you know, kind of nicer answer. This is still maybe it's too long of a one liner, but it is checking right uh, to do the whole dot includes thing that we had before. And um, yeah, and that's part of what's nice about ChatGPT is you can ask it these follow up questions. Uh, you can give it the context of I'm a beginner and it will remember that. Um, and it does a nice job explaining it too. What keyboard am I using? Just curious. Um, I forget what it's called. It's a mechanical keyboard, but it uh, I have like uh, silent silvers, I think is what I have as, as keyboard caps. Um, cool. Okay. Another interesting thing you can do with ChatGPT is, I think for the for this problem that was good. Um, what if we had like deeper questions, right? And how far can we go as as far as like the context of how we can you know master these prompts? I think it's interesting. You can ask it something like, you know, can you explain like I'm five years old. Right? That's something that, that people do on Reddit, right? Explain like I'm five. Um, what is an array? Okay. And this is cool, right? ChatGPT Chat comes up with an analogy. Imagine you have a box of different toys, like toy cars, dolls, and building blocks. An array in programming is like having a special box that can hold many things at once. Instead of toys, it can hold whatever you want. Fruits, it can hold numbers, and it says it keeps it organized. Um, 
You can ask it questions like, do you have an apple? Okay. And it keeps them in a safe and organized place. Okay. That's pretty cool, right? It might, that might not be an obvious thing to do is say, explain like I'm five, right? Like I'm not five years old, but for learning, right? Having analogies is super helpful. And the simpler the analogy, um, like the easier it is, you know, to be able to kind of put it into context, I guess. So I think that is really useful as well. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's pretty cool. What do people think about that? Anyone have any follow-up questions they want to ask about uh, that particular portion? Nope, cool. Okay. So, uh, yeah, some, some review points of this is uh, when we're asking coding questions to ChatGPT, I think it's best to ask conceptual qu questions first. Okay, start with, you know, what do I, you know, what what is where's the hole in my understanding, right? And how can I solve that rather than just giving me the solution to a problem? Um, it's also good to ask it to explain in different ways, right? Um, having it explained in different ways is something that we do as teachers, right? Uh, if, if, if I feel like when I'm explaining something to someone in, in you know, in, in my lectures, uh, clearly something's not, you know, being communicated correctly. And rather than me saying, oh, they just don't understand, it's actually more the onus on me to try and find another way to explain it. So in the same way, when we're learning something, um, it is good to try and, you know, flip, right? the normal way of, of, of getting an explanation and say, hey, can you just explain this to me in like this way? Um, and that can help with it, with learning. Um, asking for hints instead of the whole answer. Again, uh, just, just anything you can do to just get a little bit further so that you're not completely relying on this tool to answer questions for you. The most important thing we can do as beginners is, uh, you know, try and, you know, get as good at these skills as possible, get as, uh, as solid of a programmer as possible before we start getting into more difficult concepts, because there's things that, that you're gonna wanna be able to do quickly without help, um, so that when things get more complicated, uh, you know, there's no holes, holes there in your understanding. Um, but once you do have, once you have figured out the problem, um, I think there's nothing wrong with <clears throat> going on ChatGPT posting your solution and seeing, you know, an in-depth explanation and seeing, is there anything I missed, right? Something that we saw with our vowel counter was um, in the vowel counter, the examples that were given didn't have any uppercase uh, letters. And so we could have like not done that uppercase lowercase thing and passed all of our, all of our, you know, tests, but by asking ChatGPT, we actually find out that there is like a, a better solution that works for more examples than we even saw, right? So this is the, the kind of things that ChatGPT can be really useful for. Okay, so in a review of bad habits, okay? Pasting in the coding problem and asking for the solution is a habit that you don't want to develop with ChatGPT. We do not want to have this program do our work for us. This is not unique to ChatGPT. Um, I think like, like anything, uh, you want to be able to, <clears throat> when you're learning, you want to be able to learn how to do it rather than just getting someone to do it for you, right? Um, not debugging is a bad habit. You want to make sure that when you're learning that you're developing your debugging skills and you get really good at it. Uh, get comfortable with debuggers so that you can, uh, you know, solve, you have more tools, right? The idea is not to just only be good at debuggers. The idea is that you have as many tools as possible to solve a problem. Um, documentation as well is a big, is a big one. You know, like I said earlier, uh, 
ChatGPT only knows up until 2021. And documentation is, you know, a lot of effort is put into uh, keeping documentation up to date. And so uh, you have a better likelihood of finding uh, what you need uh, from up to date documentation than you would from asking ChatGPT. Right. It's also a skill in itself to be able to read documentation because it can be very wordy, um, but over time you get better at, you know, finding what you need. Um, the last thing I would say is it's not like the biggest point, but it is environment setup. And again, this is just kind of like uh, when you're maybe setting up, you know, Node or something, or you're setting up, you know, uh, uh, yeah, like new frameworks on your computer. You might want to ask ChatGPT because it's those kind of problems can be really annoying. But uh, again, the out of date thing uh, does can cause issues there, and so you want to you want to. Uh, be more uh, like looking at Stack Overflow and stuff like that to find your answers. So, one exception to all these rules that I just talked about is uh, Git. Okay, uh, Git is basically uh, always the same. Uh, I don't know if y'all have experience with Git, but but it basically like it it uh, it's always the same. There's there's not really like new updates. Um, it, it's really frustrating. If, if you have an issue with Git and, you, and you're not getting where you want to go with it, uh, and if you do something incorrectly, it can be a huge pain to solve. And so I say, ask uh, Git questions to ChatGPT as much as you want. Uh, go, you know, go to town. No, no holds barred. Okay, um, that's my that's my point about Git. Okay, so in the next section, I want to talk about improving algorithm efficiency. Okay. So this example is going to be a more complicated example than the vowel counter. It's OK if, we, if we're not all on the same page here, but I think it's an interesting example. So uh, this is a leak code medium. Okay? If anyone knows, uh, leak code easies are still very difficult. Leak code mediums uh, are, you know, in, in some cases, used as interview questions. Okay? And uh, uh, so these can be very difficult problems. So this is a problem where we have an input like this, one, two, three, four in an array. And we want to return an array uh, where it returns, uh, with, well, the problem is called a product of array except self. So this 24 is the product of all other elements except for one. 12 is the product of all other el elements except for two. Okay, so one times three times four, and then so on, right? Eight is one times two times four, six is one times two times three, okay? Now, here is my, we can see for this one too, right? Because we have zeros here. Um, sorry, we have a zero here, okay? For every number except this one, it's zero because it just canceled everything out. Uh, but for this one, we get nine because that's negative one times one times negative three times three. Okay, so my basic solution here, okay, is I create an array of ones. Okay, so if I show a comment here, I'll, I'll zoom in as well too. Sorry. There, all zoomed in. I'll put a comment here that says, you know, I would expect for these examples that. I'm just creating an array of ones. I'm going to, you know, iterate over my numbers and try and multiply numbers together um, as long as we're not looking at the same in uh, index. Okay. Oh, thanks, Sumi, for posting that in the chat. Um, cool. So if I run it, Okay, actually pass the test cases, right? So that's great. Feeling really confident. I try and submit it. Okay, it's taking some time. And it gets time limit exceeded, okay? Whenever you see time limit exceeded on leak code, it means that you're, you're, uh, you're not efficient enough. Your code is too slow. OK, so knowing this, those of you in chat, uh, 
how can we get ChatGPT to help us here? Okay, what can I say? How should I word my prompt to ChatGPT to help us with this problem? Hmm. You can ask it to explain your time complexity, then you can ask it how to make it more efficient. Okay, that's a great idea. Let's go ahead and get our code. Okay. I'm gonna go to ChatGPT, make a new chat. Okay. New chats are always good for new topics. I'm gonna say, hi, ChatGPT. Can you help me with this coding problem? Um, I need a O of N runtime. That's what was in the, the, the specifications. And this solution is not fast enough. Paste it. Thank you. <laughs> I always <laughs> am polite to chat to I know it's weird. Um, you know, part of me thinks one day, I, I don't really think this, but if, if AI ever takes over, it'll remember that I was nice to it. Um, okay. Um, okay, so I said, I gave it to it. It says, you can optimize this. Uh, the current solution is a nested loop, which makes it O of N squared. So that is correct, right? My nested loop is I'm doing, you know, four, you know, I to num's length and then four J to num's length, right? Nested. Okay. So that's O of N squared. It says the idea behind the O of N solution is two separate arrays. It actually gives me the answer. So let's try again, actually. <laughs> okay. We want to be, we want, we don't want the answer. New chat. Face this. Please don't tell me the answer. And I just have a hint as to how to solve it on my own. Okay? ChatGPT is like talking to a person. You can be as specific as you want in your prompts. So now it gives us this, right? No code. It says um, the, the key to achieving O of n runtime is to try and reduce the number of redundant calculations. Uh, you are calculating the product by iterating through the entire array uh, twice. So it's quadratic. OK. Explain it like I'm five, five years old. OK, I'll do that too. And you also explain this like I'm five years old. We're back to the blocks. It really likes blocks. Um, so think about blocks. They have numbers on it. You want to find a way to multiply the numbers. Hopefully, this five-year-old knows how to multiply. Um, so we need to find a smarter way. Do two steps. Look at each block. Figure out what the result would be if we only multiply the numbers to the left of the block. Then we'll look at each block again and figure out what the result would be if we only multiply the numbers to the right of that block. Okay. Once we have those two results for each block, we can combine them together to get this, the final special result we want. The trick is to figure out how to find those two results efficiently without doing too much work. If we can do that, we'll be able to solve the problem faster. So this is great. I think this is really good. The solution to this problem does involve uh, finding basically uh, if we multiply just the left side of uh, things together and then after you go through that but one pass you do another pass where you multiply um, everything from the right side to the left side okay and that is the solution but they didn't give us any code 
and that does give us a place to, like, as a coder, to try and figure it out on our own. Now, if you're in chat and it doesn't make perfect sense yet, that's okay. But this is a more difficult lead code problem that that takes some time to lead up to. But for someone who is in a position where this was not an obvious solution, it is really nice to just get, uh, like, you know, a hint in that way, so I can still code it out myself. Yeah. Imram, it's okay if it doesn't make sense to me. I'm a beginner to learn all this. It's, it's okay. One of the things with leak code uh, is that um, it really is something that you kind of have to build up to. And being an at being a beginner, um, you 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 want to like work on a lot of um, uh, smaller problem sets before we get to even worrying about things like efficiency and stuff like that. But I did want to include it in my talk today as just another example of, um, of how we can use ChatGPT. OK. So the key to this was basically, honestly, reusing the same steps from before as far as asking, like going for concepts first, trying to explain things, asking it to explain things in different ways. Um, asking for hints, and you have to be really specific, right? It's it's we're not really used to using, you know, a tool like this. Um, but by being really specific, it helps us, you know, work on being a good programmer. Okay, one more thing I want to show. This is going to go past three o'clock. That's okay. Um, is how to use ChatGPT for job search help. I think this is really interesting as well. Because um, one of the things that I really like about ChatGPT is um, it can help us with menial tasks. Okay, this is the, this is like you know the bane of many people's job search is like updating resumes, writing cover letters, uh, writing recommendations. All these things can be a huge pain, and having a tool like this can be really helpful. Okay, and so here's an example of how you can use it for resume. For example, is you can say, you know, hey, um, I would like a nice resume template um, for a full stack web developer. Um, I only have teaching experience. <laughs> um, but I have some projects that I'd like to highlight, as well as a, um, let's say, a degree, a bachelor's degree at XYZ University. Um, Right, and you can kind of be as specific as you want. Lay out all the things you wanted to highlight, and like you can also just get the template from this, right? Or you can tell it more information, right? Um, and uh, let's just see what this gives us, right? Cool. All right, so it generated this whole thing for us. And uh, one thing to know is if you copy and paste this, okay, if you paste it into a like a Google Doc, it's going to have weird styling and everything, okay? But if you use this button, this is like a copy button, and that will get rid of all the weird uh, styling that's on this page, um, and it'll be in like a regular text format. That's kind of nice, okay? Um, but look, this is pretty good. It gave us um, objective. We can, you know, build on this however much we want. Um, it lists out education, talks about technical skills. Again, it, it like kind of because we said full stack web developer, it just it just put this stuff in here. We can go ahead and on our own remove whichever ones we don't have, um, or add ones that we do want to, you know, put in here. 
um, and again, go in depth and, and fix this. And I think this is so helpful because the hardest thing to do is like when you have a blank page and you're like, what do I do here? You know, or you, if you're, if you're changing industries, if different jobs and whatnot, you're like, how do I, um, highlight, you know, how do I change the way I, I write my resume? And this is a very standard looking resume, but, um, you know, you can go ahead and you'd be able to modify this to whatever needs that you need, which is great. Um, cool. Another example is like the cover letter, right? Saying, awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Can I also have a cover letter? Um, I am trying to uh, apply to with a good, it's a good um, option. Let's just say, let's say Google, fine. Google is not hiring, but it's okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to apply to Google. Uh, I mean, you can give whatever details you want, but let's just say that. Okay, again, what's nice about this is it fills in a lot of the fluffy language that we all don't like doing. You know, like this is something that we'd have to look up and we'd be like, oh, is, is the beginning of this good? And I don't know, I think this is a lot nicer to just have it written out for us and, and then modify to our needs, okay? And yeah, like I think this is, you know, I, I, again, you would want to modify it to, to whatever you, to whatever is specific about you and highlight things that are, you know, why you're actually excited about that job. But this is great. I think this is a great tool for something like this. Do hiring managers look down on this? Um, I mean, if you modify it enough, I feel like they wouldn't really know. And so, I don't know. I mean, a, a lot of, you know, for something where you can get in your own head about, you know, writing a cover letter and you could spend, you could spend hours writing it right from scratch. And, you know, again, they might not even look at it. Okay. So it's one of those things where you're sending out tons of applications. Um, at least you're getting cover letters out there. And as long as you're doing some work to modify it, I feel like it's not super obvious that they, um, they use a tool like this. And I, I, again, I, I would, I would go like, this is a very basic one. We didn't give it really very much other than just, I want to go at this company. I think the more specific you get in your prompt, then the more varied of a response that you're going to get from chat GPT that will make it different from what other people, again, if hundreds of other people are writing applications and using the same template as you right? But if you, if you're getting more specific in your prompt, then you're going to have a, uh, I think it'll modify it to, to that extent, right? And again, it is worthwhile when you're looking at something like this to go through and maybe reword certain things so that it's not just like so standard, you know? Like how does how does ChatGPT know you're a lifelong learner? You know, that's a big, maybe, it's, maybe you think that's cliche. So I only started learning recently. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, another one you can do again is when you are in your job search, recommend you know that you you know maybe you have other people you're job searching with, and this is a lot of for a lot of people who come from App Academy is they you know have all these buddies from the cohort, and you know one thing that they'll, they'll do is they'll write recommendations for each other on LinkedIn, or or write recommendations and, and be a letter give a letter of rec to a company when a company needs one. And this is another thing you can do with ChatGPT. They say, can I have, like, you know, can you write me a letter of recommendation for, um, you could be my friend, it could be someone I worked closely with, um, they are applying 
to X job, right? Or maybe they're applying to, you know, Z university to a something program, right? And you give it all this information. You can say, you know, I'd like this to be a very high recommendation. You know, just give it specific instances. They were very good at this, right? They excelled at this. Here's an example of one thing they did really well. Can you write this all in one, uh, you know, response? And it, it does very well. Okay. Again, you'd want to go through, reword it. It's like, would you say wholehearted? I don't know. Would you? Um, I think it's good at this. I used this recently for someone who was uh, applying uh, somewhere. So I thought it was very good. Okay. Cool. Okay. One last thing. The last topic for today that I wanted to talk about was um, making a chatbot. Now, again, this is a topic that um, for beginners is going to be maybe a little bit, um, you know, over people's heads. But I think um, it's, I think it, this will kind of show how um, close you can get. Um, like there's a, there's a low lift to, to getting to making a chat bot. So I'm going to show this. I think it's cool. You share my VS code. Okay. In my VS code. Okay. We have vowels. So I have a separate folder. Okay. Now inside of this, I have 28 lines of code. Okay. It's not that much code. And some of it is comments. Okay. These 28 lines of code you can use to have a basic interface with the um, ChatGPT, uh, you know, uh, API. Okay. So there's an API where you can basically uh, like ask ChatGPT and in incorporate ChatGPT into an application. Okay. This is very cool. Okay. So some basics to this is um, when you get started, okay, is, okay, you need, you would basically need to start by having a uh, package JSON in here. You can create this by just doing npm init dash y, and this will automatically create this file for you, okay? Um, one thing that you would have to add is this line to add later. Okay. I can't actually have a comment here because this is the type of file it is, but um, you would have to add the type module. Okay. Just due to how the imports work. Okay. The other thing you do is after you run this, is you run npm install dot env and open AI. Okay, so that gives you these two libraries that are part of uh, your app, okay? Um, the dot env allows you to hide um, API keys. This is like an API key is something that identifies um, your app as coming from specifically you as a user. Um, and then this is the you know library for using open AI. Um, Katie asks, will we be sharing a recording of this lecture? And yes, we will be. Uh, this will all be recorded and posted on YouTube. Um, cool. Um, so I'm not going to show you my ENV file because one thing about, one thing I'll say about this is in order to uh, use this API is you have to connect your uh, uh, like a, a credit card or something to uh, OpenAI, like your OpenAI account. Um, but uh, honestly, it's, I mean, if you want to mess with this stuff, it's not expensive. Uh, I think they charge you five bucks just when you give your card initially. But so far, I've been using it uh, and I've been charged like two cents. So 
it's not too bad. Um, anyways, so there's some setup. Uh, I can list all that in the code uh, when I, you know, we'll send this code out later as well. Okay, so basically you have some setup. You connect, you know, you import some, you import the libraries to your code. You connect it to your API key, and then you run this configuration line. And basically, getting down into the meat of it, um, you can run something called create chat completion. Now, all this is on the API documentation on, on the website. Um, and the part that you're going to care about is specifically what kind of prompts we can do. So there's something in here called the model. So we're going to specify the GPT 3.5 turbo. That's uh, what we're going to use to, that's basically, again, that's just chat GPT. Um, in this messages area is where we can specify what our question is. So if we say role user content hello, role user means that chat GPT knows that we are asking the question, okay? So once we run this file, it's going to ask ChatGPT hello. Then it's going to give us a response. This line just puts that response into a console log. If we have an error, then it will show us the error. Okay. So all we do here is say node, basic chat. We run the file. Okay. So I said hello. And then in my chat, it says, hi, how can I assist you? Okay. Um, and so in here we can say, you know, what is two plus two? Okay. If two plus two equals four, All right? We can write whatever we want inside of this, and it will give us responses. Okay. But let's get a little crazy. Let's get a little crazy with it. Okay. I'm gonna put the thing in here. It's going to be another role, okay? This role is called system. And system is kind of like before when we were saying, you know, hey, explain to this like to explain this to me like I'm a 5-year-old. So system we can just say, I don't know, you are an assistant that speaks in riddles. Okay, and let's ask it a question like, how do I ride a bike? And <laughs> this is what it gives us. I'm free like the wind, yet bound to the ground. Two wheels are my feet, spinning round and round. To ride me balances key, be not afraid, find your center and let the pedals be obeyed. Start with a push, a gentle glide to begin. Feel the rhythm, let your journey unfold within. This is really more of a poem than a riddle. Once you find your balance, I'll carry you far, biking, a joyous adventure wherever you are. Wow. So what this does here, rule system, you kind of tell it like, hey, here's some extra context of how I want you to behave when you get my like uh, questions, okay? So this is not really part of like the query. It's almost as if, like when we were in a conversation before, as if we said, hey, can you answer all my questions like this? Okay. So that is pretty cool. <laughs> um, what was the package called? OpenAI. You could just say npm install OpenAI. Again, in order to use this, you do have to connect your card to OpenAI. Um, cool. One more thing I'll show you is, you know, right now we have to run the file. What if I want to just have a conversation in my terminal? Okay, so this is my other app. Okay. And all I've added here is it's exactly the same, except I'm importing a read line, um, which is kind of something that's built in, but I'm importing it. I'm setting up this, which creates like a command line interface for us. Uh, I use this prompt 
method um, to create the command line interface. And then um, I use user interface dot on line. This is basically saying, uh, you know, run this function every time I press enter. Okay. And again, for beginners, uh, I wouldn't worry too much about this stuff looking uh, too, you know, too crazy. But I want to say that, again, we're looking at a 36 line piece of code. And uh, it just goes to show that, like, you know, one day you will be at a part where you understand this and uh, you'll be able to make, you know, add very cool functionality to an app very easily. Okay. That's what I'm trying to show here. So let's have fun with it. For this one, the system content says you are not an assistant and respond with intentionally incorrect answers. Spicy. So this other file is called actual chat. And type in the terminal to ask ChatGPT a question. That's my console log from here. And I'll do, uh, okay, how do I ride a bike? Okay, it says to ride a bike, simply stand next to the bike and start flapping your arms like wings. The bike will become intimidated by your dominant display of avian prowess and let you ride it. Okay. <laughs> So that was uh, that was given this uh, as the system content, right? You're not an assistant, and you respond with intentionally incorrect answers. So, um, yeah, you can try that yourself with riding a bike. Um, yeah, checks out. Um, yeah, but pretty cool, and we can ask follow-up questions. Um, let's say uh, how. Um, do I get on the bike? Or maybe just say, how do I flap my arms? It does actually give real directions here. <laughs> so, this is actually interesting. I, 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 try, I tried this before. And uh, when it gives step-by-step -step instructions, it sometimes ignores what we put here. And so you actually can just say, um, if there are step-by-step -step instructions, um, these must be incorrect as well. Okay. Since I changed it, I'm going to run it again. How do I flap my arms? OK, so now it says, secure your arms tightly to your sides using strong duct tape. So there we go. Right, We had to add this um, kind of extra point in here about specifying if there's step-by-step -step instructions, then do this as incorrectly as well, right? So you can <laughs> you can have a lot of control over it. Um, it does also add this thing at the end. These instructions are intentionally incorrect. You may or may not want that. But again, this is a bot, okay? I wanna do one that's actually like, maybe different from what we've seen before, okay? Um, this will be my last example, unless people wanna try things out. So this one is, um, you are a thesaurus. Um, the user will uh, give a word, and you should return, respond with similar synonyms of that word. Okay. Hopefully, you all can see how you know, something like this can be a very valuable tool, right? Now you could like have this in an application and um, and use it to just like perform a function on your application. Okay, so I just type something like bike. 
Uh, didn't like that. I'll try, um, let's see, uh, microphone. Wait, that, that, that's not good. I should think, think of a <laughs> um, fly. How about that? Okay, it's not working. Um, I think I should remove this user will give a word. Try again. Why? There we go. Um, so I removed the I removed that thing about um, the user doing something. Um, and now we can see fly gives us soar, glide, aviation, take flight, jet pilot wing, or bike. There we go. So that's pretty cool, right? Completely different functionality than what we were getting before, where it's trying to like, you know, help us get a response and, and all this stuff. We gave it this kind of like new role, right? Right. And so that's pretty fun. Um, any questions on this? I know if this is too technical, I didn't, I didn't really code it in front of you. I just kind of like used it, but just kind of showing like, you know, some of the abilities you can do with ChatGPT. How do I become a software engineer? Mm. Matt, is that from when it was being rude to me? For the rude, yeah. yeah let's try it. as possible. Okay. How do I become a software engineer? It's thinking. Thinking real hard. It's like, how do I give incorrect for, advice for this? <laughs> Matt, what did you do? Let's see uh, if I can modify something about this. Um, okay, I'll try again. We just remove. It's really annoying. Move that. Hello. How do I become a software engineer? Okay. It says to obtain a bachelor's degree in computer science, software engineering, or related field. Well, or you could go to App Academy. <laughs> um, ChatGPT doesn't know everything. That's the that's the um, the takeaway from this. Um, yeah, when I took away the step by step instructions thing, it didn't work. But anyways, that is I think that is all for this. I'm going to go back to finish my slides. Okay. Reveal. Uh, ChatGPT is useful in a variety of contexts, 
it can be a very useful tool for coding, but only if it's used correctly. Um, also, it's used to, useful for a job search and other menial tasks. Okay, and I think the use of the API opens up a lot of creative possibilities. Um, that uh, I hope I ins maybe inspired you in some way to you know to uh, work towards that and see if you can uh, uh, you know do this yourself. One question that I want to ask y'all before we go is chat GPT is kind of annoying to say. It's it's four syllables long, okay? And I haven't heard anyone come up with anything better yet, but can you think of a nickname for chat GPT that might be better? It just sounds better, maybe it rolls off the tongue better? Yeah, say so in the chat or in the comments. Uh, <laughs> one person said Greg. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, yeah, this is my outro. Uh, again, make sure to visit appacademy.io to view all of our programs. Uh, you can learn to code for free at appacademy.io course appacademy open. Uh, you can join our Discord if you haven't already. It's uh, a good place to get started if you are interested in the free content. All right. Uh, thank you, everyone, for um, joining the stream and being part of it. This was a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, I hope you have a great rest of your day. I think real quick, we're going to, all the Twitch folks, we're going to go over to Seek a Player's stream. We're going to raid into his stream. So everybody say hi from App Academy whenever we go over there. Awesome. All right, I'm going to do a, uh, I forgot that this music was on all the time. Just end, end stream thing. Bye. Bye.